to, to turn up. Uh, welcome everyone. And I'll just run through some of these headings on the, uh, that I have in this workshop page. Uh, we've covered music pretty much in depth. I mean, we could do a whole weekend just on music, I'm sure. Um, and we covered art uh, and the new world religion to a degree. But if there are comments and questions that people have who are, who are students of, the, of uh, DK's teachings, um, then there's, there's sure to be a few, a few gaps to fill in that I've missed. There's the new modalities of healing, light and color, um, that I didn't go into in a great deal of detail. The restoration of the mysteries, which I talked about on the first session as well. Just trying to find my mouse here and get it onto the big screen. Just, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, it just kind of turns up by itself. The fear of death. Got a few passages to read out about that. Uh, the first initiation, second initiation. We can talk about the science of initiation, which is a sub-science of esoteric astrology. The fact that a master will be in each of the five planetary centers um, the last ditch fight against materialism, which is pretty much starting now um, as we head towards 2025. A beacon of hey, light Philip? established. Sorry. Sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. Philip Francis, um, when there's a good moment, I'd like to make a comment. Um, is there a way for people to put their hands up so I can see it in a chat box or something or? Um, Let me look. I haven't done that yeah, before. I could have done that. I'm sorry. I just opened. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how to do it, Francis. So I was just asking where I actually do that on my toolbar. Um, it's under the participants. When people open up the participants, and Philip, if you want to open it up, you'll see a little blue hand come up. Right. Um, the problem is I, it's getting my mouse from the big screen back to the small screen again where the toolbar is. And we, we, I will go ahead and uh, unmute the participants as, as they raise their hand, uh, you know, but we'll probably wait until you ask for questions and answers. Well, um, maybe someone like yourself could mediate and just, just tell me that, that a question is queued up. Um, okay. Bearing in mind, everyone, that uh, I, I can't be answering one or two questions every couple of minutes. So just to keep a flow going and um, we'll address them at various intervals, but uh, we can take on your question first, if you like, Francis. Wasn't really a question, it was a comment on uh, this list. Uh, and the fact that um, etheric vision will uh, become a part of the equipment in the first decade, at least that's my, I know it's, it's, he doesn't directly say, but I'm thinking that in the first decade of Aquarius that there will be a, a percentage of people who will gain the etheric yeah, yeah. vision. And that's going to, all of this is going to be affected by that. The arts yeah. in every way, yes. um, certainly fear of doubt, um, yes. et cetera. So. Even, um, I mean, that's already occurring now. And also on a higher turn of the spiral, there'll be a, a higher, higher psychism and clairvoyance. Um, and I'm thinking of Dwayne's presentation today when he was showing those swirly things in the sun. Um, and it immediately reminded me of, Go, uh, of Van Gogh's and his swirly skies. Uh, and the wondering whether he you know, had, that, had that kind of etheric or, or clairvoyant vision to uh, give that unique style. And we'll see a lot more of that kind of thing with the emerging artists in the Aquarian cycle, no doubt. So I was just running through the rest of that list there, initiation of the Christ and Buddha at the end of the age, Renaissance in the last decade of Aquarius, an era ushering in an era of brotherly love, nations on the fourth ray, which we covered earlier on. And so, um, sorry, before you go on, still have on, people coming else. in. Excuse me, is that you, Bill? 
Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, Frida asked, can you expand on this beacon of light? Yes, I'm going to. I've okay. got a page uh, further on that we're going to look into that, some quotes about that. Um, first of all, I'd just like to, seeing we dealt with the esoteric education just in a very minor way uh, earlier on, um, it's the general education that DK discusses where he says the world must prepare for a renaissance of the arts, a new free flow of the creative spirit. Steps educators take will determine the nature of the coming civilization. Now he's talking just after World War II had finished and all the destruction and agony of that particular phase of the war. Uh, and he says, we must lay emphasis upon the great moments in history when man's divinity flamed forth historical subjects such as the Magna Carta, the French Revolution, the concepts of liberty, equality and fraternity, the American Bill of Rights, the Atlantic Charter and the Four Freedoms. I do cover these in an essay that I wrote years ago in my Destiny of the Nations book, Volume 1, about, uh, I think it's called something like Sirius, Uranus and, and, uh, and Liberation in the last 2000 years. Uh, there is one of the books that, that is, that's taken from where he outlines those major points in history that, that have to do with the ongoing uh, unfoldment of liberation in the human family. And, of course, if you look at one, some of the most recent ones, such as Roosevelt's FDR's Four Freedoms, they are sorely lacking in, in their achievement as yet in the world. Um, so his decade goes on to say these concepts must govern the new age and its nascent civilization, its future culture. Children must be taught the significance of these five great declarations and the futility of hate and war. These are kind of platitudes in, in many ways, but it doesn't hurt to, to re-enunciate them. He says, I have noted the imminence of the coming spiritual renaissance to all of, the, uh, all of these, I would like to add that one of our immediate educational objectives must be the elimination of the competitive spirit and the substitution of the cooperative consciousness. That's from education in the new age. And of course, we see this, uh, the competitive spirit is dominating the world still, but uh, we're coming to a point right now with Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter going through Capricorn where uh, there's a big chance that, that uh, we can make a, a big dent in that, in that old paradigm and bring the new paradigm in. And he discusses in our most, uh, our most recent renaissance, in Jupiter, we had educational attention concentrated upon a few privileged groups giving them a carefully planned cultural training. We're talking about you know, uh, 13th, 12th, 14th century here. Um, and giving them a carefully planned cultural training, but teaching only the necessary rudiments of learning to the masses. This produced periodically such important epochs of cultural expression as, in, as the Elizabethan period, the Renaissance, the poets and writers of the Victorian era, and the poets and musicians of Germany, as well as the clusters of artists whose memory is perpetuated in the Italian school, the Dutch and the Spanish groups. That's again from an education in the new age. So um, these are just some of the, the basics. I mean, there's a lot more, of course, that, uh, that child education, uh, the transformation of child education needs to, needs to uh, expand into. Um, so before we move on to the next section, were there any comments or questions about that? Or anything this, for those of you who have just come, I see that the, the numbers are still ticking over here. Um, any yes. questions from this we morning? Did. Just before, just uh, hang on, uh, Bill. Um, if anyone has anything from this morning uh, that they'd like to ask, uh, preferably more questions than comments because I think it generates a dialogue. Yes, Bill. Okay. Um, Yvonne asks, when is the first decanate of Aquarius? Oh, yes. I was going to qualify Francis's remarks before. Thanks for that. Um, it's, well, the, 
the sun precesses technically and astronomically into Aquarius in 2117 AD. That's 93 years away. And therefore the first decadent will be the first 720 years, a third of the 2160 year precession cycle. So it will last from 2117 plus 720. Uh, that will be the first decadent and ruled by Saturn. The next decadent it will be ruled by Mercury and the next decadent after that, the, the third and final one will be ruled by Venus and they all have different meanings for the particular quality of energy that's been transmitted in each of those decadents. Is there another question? Um, yes, you've got a couple more. Uh, Maya says business is really embracing teams and cooperation now. Mm. Yes, and also in, in, in an altruistic way and also in a selfish way. Um, I see a lot of the selfish corporations at the moment um, as the shadow of their new Aquarian cycle in terms of group cooperation. They'll be far less selfishly motivated and there's quite a few around already that, that are quite well motivated, but that will increase as we go into, into, into the Aquarian cycle. But at the moment, those particular groups are holding the world in a stranglehold and uh, from which we are about to be released, I hope. Uh, next question. Um, Giselle says, do you think that the Waldorf school helped with the better education of children? Oh, most certainly. I don't know too much about it, but um, I would say so. Uh, that's, uh, you're talking about the Steiner education and uh, Montessori and, and several other different techniques. They're all, they're all parts of uh, just like the, the attempts to esoteric education. Uh, have been going for the last century. They're all attempts at working towards the new schools and, and likewise with the uh, so-called exoteric education. And then the, the next one in, it looks to me like the last one right now is, does Uranus coming into Gemini herald the fourth ray in some way? Uh, yes, well, it, it, because it, it, I think I mentioned in my uh, my astrology workshop a few days ago that uh, Uranus goes into Gemini in 2025 or 2026, which is the, um, uh, the start of the fourth race cycle. In fact, there are several planets transiting from signs to other signs in 2025. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. It's quite amazing, really, quite a, quite a confluence of of transitions there. And Gemini uh, does have an association with the fourth ray via its ancient association with the moon. Uh, there's a little known quote in esoteric astrology about that. And of course, the moon is the co-ruler of the fourth ray. The conflict part of that fourth ray equation, I think. So. And, and we, oh, I'm sorry. No, go on, go ahead. Uh, we have one more. How long do you think this transition period of unrest will last? When will we see some of the new Aquarian principles really start to be seen felt in everyday life? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's a short answer. Um, it's all relative, isn't it? I mean, we've seen these Aquarian principles being expressed since the birth, since the discovery of Uranus in, in the 18th century. Uh, in many ways, we have the, the birth of, of the nation of the USA, an Aquarian soul, and to be a leader, a synthesis of Europe and, and a leader into the uh, six root race. So um, uh, that's where the battle for uh, the, the soul of the nation is taking place right now, between the soul and the dweller. But it's not just the USA's dweller, it's the world dweller, I think, that's being fought out in the USA. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, I think between now and 2025, maybe even up to 2030, I think we're gonna see a lot of conflict, personally. And I, I'm not a pessimist, I'm an optimist at heart, but I'm also a realist. And uh, I see the, the old structures are so entrenched 
uh, that people are going to have to be dragged kicking and screaming into, into the new cycle and, uh, and may experience a lot of uh, conflict and pain in relinquishing all those old patterns. So there's another question. No. That's all we've got for right now. Thank you. Okay. So um, let's come back to the theme of sound, colour, chanting, movement or dance. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, um, they're very seductive subjects, I think. TK says, when the egoic ray is, is the ray of harmony, the fourth ray of the method will be along the line of inner realisation of beauty and harmony. It causes the shattering of the causal body by the knowledge of sound and colour and the shattering effect of sound. This process leads to the realisation of the notes and tones of the solar system, the note and tone of individuals, and the endeavour to harmonise the egoic note or the soul note with that of others. When the egoic note is sounded in harmony with other egos, the result is the shattering of the causal body, disassociation from the lower and attainment of perfection. He's talking about some highly esoteric things there, but I thought I'd include that here just to, just to illustrate the constructive and destructive effects of sound, which of course is, is what the divas that the master Serapis is so connected with, um, employ in the building of bodies or the destruction of old forms. Its exponents develop along the line of music. And that's the fourth ray exponents develop along the line of music, rhythm and painting. They withdraw within in order to comprehend the life side of the form. The outer manifestation of that life side in the world is through that which we call art. The great painters and the superlative musicians uh, in many cases, reaching their goal that way. And of course, we've seen that in the Italian European Renaissance, so many fourth ray souls, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, to name a few. Um, and of course, in Germany, with uh, the, uh, the incredible crop of musicians that came forth over a few centuries. In time, the value of the combination of music, chanting and rhythmic movement will be comprehended and it will be utilized for the achieving of certain results. I believe um, the science of eurythmy is part of that rhythmic movement, uh, the more esoteric side of, of, uh, of uh, rhythmic movement. Groups of people will gather together to study the creative effects or the purificati purificatory efficacy of ordered sound joined to movement and unity. So we have the ordered sound, the seventh ray of order and the right utilization of sound joined to movement and unity. So there's dance, obviously, when you put sound and movement together, you have dance of various kinds. The constructive effect on the three bodies will be clairvoyantly studied the eliminative, eliminative effect on the matter of those bodies will be schematic, schematically tabulated. Knowledge gain will be applied to the improvement of those bodies. So this is a very scientific approach. It's in fact, it's really the blending of science and, and clairvoyance uh, of um, psychic sensitivity and vision with, with science and that is one of the major themes of the Aquarian cycle is for the exoteric and esoteric sciences to come back together again. Music will be largely employed in construction and in 100 years from now, and he was talking in the 1940s or 50s here, so it's not too far away, it will be a feature in certain work of a constructive nature, the utilization of ordered sound to achieve certain ends. And we know, of course, the, the classic uh, example I give in my Hidden History video, where the walls of Jericho were brought down by the uh, cyclic marching of, of, of an army around its walls for seven days with the rhythmic stomping of the feet and blowing of, of uh, trumpets. <clears throat> That's old Atlantean magic uh, in many ways um, that achieved uh, that, those uh, those ends. 
The stimulation of music, certain sounds shatter and break, certain other sounds stimulate and attract. When the key of man's life is known, when the sound he responds to is recognized, then comes the possibility of the utilization of sound in refinement. Now, this is an amazing quote, when the key of a man's life is known, when the, you know, the, the keynote of the soul, the chord, if you like, um, <clears throat> the relation, the, the, the particular frequencies of the personality and the soul, uh, this is really getting into, into some really advanced, accelerated uh, work regarding uh, evolution of consciousness and soul evolution. Uh, then he talks about 27 occult laws will be revealed after initiation. The basic laws of color and sound, of, excuse me, of color and of music and rhythm. When music produces a warmth or stimulation and when pictures, for instance, glow or reveal the subjective within the objective, then will this fourth ray of harmony be coming to fruition. In music, fourth ray compositions are always full of melody and the fourth ray man loves a good tune. Um, with this reference to pictures glowing, I'm reminded of Master R when he was, uh, I think it was when he was Count Saint Germain, in fact, uh, experimenting with uh, painting with uh, Mother of Pearl in order to, to make uh, the pictures glow. Maybe some of our artists here may have some comments on that, such as Francis and others. We have some musicians here too, probably. Um, you've got a couple of questions here and sure. then I Go see ahead. some hands coming up. Okay, Maya says, it seems the rays of aspect will be at the heart of the new esoteric education coming in. HPB was ray one, Bailey ray two, and the next will be the science of manifestation in cooperation with the three rays of aspect, with the fourth ray is the bridge. She asked, will you speak on that? Uh, yeah, you can, you can see the three aspects, the first, second, and third, the three rays of aspects in that light. But you can also see it the other way around too. For instance, Blavatsky's secret doctrine was an initial impulse from the first ray ashram and Blavatsky, a first ray disciple. And of course, Moya being the, um, uh, the one who oversees all the esoteric schools. So there's the first aspect there. Bailey uh, and Rurik being the second aspect, uh, Rurik being more the fourth ray, I think, uh, but on, on the second ray line. Bailey the second ray and with a touch of third ray of course like a two three ashram perhaps and what what is coming now you can see is the third aspect the manifestation via the internet uh, via the very students of DK's books and so forth but it also can be seen as first aspect you can see the Blavatsky's initial impulse as being third aspect DK Rurik still second aspect but the next phase of the teaching says first aspect. So that, that's a longer conversation. So I better move on to the next question. Okay, um, Barb says, this reminds me of, uh-oh, I'm gonna murder this. <laughs> Panurhythmy dance. That that's was right. started by Peter Dunyov. Dunyov, um, that's right, yeah. Okay, and is danced all over the world and growing. Yes. It's a beautiful geometric dance that is that's a metaphor right. for the path. Our brother, Peter Kabaska, I think is, is learned in that particular field. Um, and um, yeah, thank you. Um, and Maya says the military in the US is already experimenting with sound for destructive purposes. Yes, well, many military militaries are China, Russia. Uh, they've had this technology for a long time. And uh, all right, so is there any other questions? Uh, yes, well, we had a hand up a minute ago, but it went down. Anyway, um, Eva would like to speak also. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Eva. Hi, Philip. Uh, Hi. Now, maybe I've not understood this correctly, but from my understanding, there's not too many good things in terms of astrology happening for the United States. Do you see this as a, a breakdown of the strength and the, and the 
the, the authority that the United States had over the world as we're starting to slowly move into the next root race? Or like, is this a breaking down of the United States, the empire as it, as it has been called? Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about the states too much. Uh, I don't want to get away from the subject too much, but I will just briefly say that this is their first Pluto return since the United States was formed coming up in the next few years. And Pluto is breaking everything down as it does in order to, to break up all the crystallizations that have been formed since 1776. And um, we are seeing this now. We, everyone's bemoaning the fact that you know, uh, USA is no longer a credible force in the world and all this kind of thing. Um, and this has to, it has, it has in many ways to hit rock bottom before it can uh, rebuild itself. So that's the short answer, but I should move on. I just want to ask you, Bill, how, how much time do we have left? About an hour? Uh, let me see. Yeah, until um... 525 my time what is that so about yeah you have you have about 50 minutes okay thanks so just so i need to pace myself with the material i've got here that's all um was there another comment or question no i don't see anything right now let us examine this fear of death then this is quite an amazing statement because you know the the fear of death has been around uh since the ancient days of atlantis literally millions of years and it's been fostered or, or um, driven into deep into matter uh, via the materialistic forces that have reinforced that. And what have we got in the world today with coronavirus? Fear of death. Um, it constitutes humanity's dweller in many ways. Uh, and DK makes the amazing statement, before the close of next century, which is 2100, death will be finally seen to be non-existent the continuity of consciousness will be widely developed. Many of the highest types of humanity will function simultaneously in the two worlds. The old fear will go and intercourse between astral and physical planes will be so firmly established and scientifically controlled that the work of trans mediums will come to an end. So again, we have this factor of science for the age of Aquarius. It's a very interesting sign in its dual expression. The fifth ray is the only ray to come through uh, Aquarius, the fifth ray of science. Um, and the seventh ray is associated with Aquarius via its exoteric ruler Uranus, which is known as the planet of exoteric science in particular. Um, yet the esoteric ruler of, of Aquarius is Jupiter, the, the ruler of the second ray of love wisdom. So it's, you have this, and also Aquarius is, from one point of view, a sign of the emotions, given the wavy signs of the glyph of Aquarius and the ability of the, um, the Aquarian to, to uh, contact or access that compassion via the emotional body. I have written about this, and DK does have a little quote about that. Um, about this watery nature of Aquarius. So the waters in the urn that the water bearer pours forth from their shoulder are the waters of love wisdom, but also of emotional uh, empathy, if you like, with the masses, with the, with the greater consciousness, with the uh, broader mass consciousness. Um, so, he says the work of the trans mediums will come to an end and he elaborates upon that about how you know more or less good riddance to all that um the reign of fear of death is well near ended we shall soon enter upon a period of knowledge and of certainty which will eliminate all our fears this is an extraordinary statement because you know for most most of the world who are um yeah, especially in the West, who who uh, have been grown up with traditional religion, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, uh, don't understand the concept of reincarnation or that or that there is another life, and this is part of the reason why that has driven materialism uh, so strongly, and also uh, how many people hold on to to life unnecessarily longer than they should. 
because of the fear of that imagined hell or hellfire that they'll go to that uh, Christian religions, particularly Catholicism, have ingrained in certain cultures um, around the world. So I thought that was interesting to observe in the Catholic country of Italy in recent months, in fact, when uh, the many people who have been uh, succumbing to the COVID-19 virus were mainly in their 80s and 90s. So one wonders. Anyway, um, the technique of dying has been lost, DK tells us, in the West and almost lost in the East. The fear of death and depression constitutes a man the dweller on the threshold. Hence this current period with the coronavirus that threatens human mortality and has created this extraordinary situation in the world that has never happened before. These sentient reactions, he says, DK tells us, to psychological factors cannot be dealt with by the use of courage. He's talking about these sentient reactions to death, to the psychological factors of death, cannot be dealt with by the use of courage. They must be met by omniscience of the soul working through the mind. Very interesting uh, statement that, isn't it? <clears throat> so there's a brief uh, look at death. Uh, before I go on to the next slide, Did anyone make, uh, like to make any questions there? Yes, uh, Helen's got her hand up. Um, go ahead, Helen. Yes, I uh, have noticed that in my work as an end-of-life doula that um, we are beginning to change the attitude towards death, mm. just the first few steps um, yes. with the death positive movement, with death cafes. Um, there's obviously a lot more to be done. Um, mm. And I was very curious about this, uh, the technique of dying. Um, and uh, wondered if you could direct me towards any specifics in the blue books about that. Uh, in esoteric healing, I believe there's there's some material where he talks about uh, certain mantras that can be sounded to help snap the um, the life thread and the burning of sandalwood, of course. Sandalwood, um, yeah. I can't recall all the other details there, but I think you'll find it in esoteric healing. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, Kubler-Ross and people like that have done marvelous work in mm -hmm. last century, preparing yeah. us for this, uh, this, uh, you know, the ridding of the fear of death in the next 200 years or the next 100 years even. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that, you know, the need for it um, in, in education, um, and in art, that it should become an art of death and dying. Mm. Um, and that I think that all these factors, all these subjects that you're approaching here will play their part in yes. the eliminating the sphere of death. So thank yes, you. Yes, indeed. Um, I mean, it's an incredible succubus that just hangs over humanity and and conditions in a very kind of uh, unseen way, uh, so much behavior mm -hmm. and uh, that is based on, on this sort of subconscious fear. All right, any other questions there, BL? Uh, yes, Francis says it's in part two of Esoteric Healing. And Thank he's you. Color orange, sound of D, um, et cetera, play a part. Um, also, Death, the Great right. Adventure, a compilation of DK's writings on death. Yes, Robert Burrell's great uh, compilation that was made in 1980 is, uh, is well worth a look. And you mentioned, you said orange light, did you? Uh, yeah, orange color yes. and the sound of D. That's right. The sound of D, the note of D. Right. Yeah, okay, thank you. And then uh, Barb put the uh, Death, the Great Adventure, she put the link in there. Oh, thanks. 
um, so uh, for Luce's trust. So, okay. and that's all I see right now. All right. The diva and human kingdoms, the, the diva and human evolution will in the next 500 years become more conscious of each other, will more freely cooperate. With this growing consciousness will be found a seeking after methods of communication between human and diva. When need of communication for constructive ends is sincerely felt, then under judicious guidance of masters, certain old mantrams will be permitted. The human diva action, interaction and reaction will be closely studied and watched. It is hoped that the benefit to both groups will be mutual. Human evolution should give strength to the deva and the deva joy to the human. Man should communicate to the devas with the object, objective point of view, while, with an objective point of view, I should say, while they, turn, they in turn will pour in on him their healing magnetism. Devas are the custodians of prana, magnetism and vitalities, just as man is the custodian of the fifth principle or manas. That's from Letters and Occult Meditation, some of that material. And, of course, and I've written underneath that the eventual marriage between human and David kingdoms will occur in millions of years during the sixth root race, where humanity or those kingdoms merge to create the, the so-called divine hermaphrodite, which is our original state before individualization and Lemuria uh, 21 million years ago, we were hermaphrodite. So the whole mystery of the, and the duality of the second ray of love wisdom is hidden in, in, in all this as well. Um, but the six root race will go for many millions of years and we're only just beginning to enter into that. Well, technically in about 25,000 years, but the, the first few uh, inroads into that are occurring now. And of course, Findhorn and the Paralandra communities in uh, the last century, particularly in the 60s in Finhorn, where initial experiments between human and divas have taken place. Um, and of course, it got a, a lot of negative publicity from the British tabloids at the time <laughs> that rubbished the thought of, you know, as they have done with crop circles, uh, the thought of, of fairies. Um, but um, there's been many other uh, authors, theosophical authors, such as Jeffrey Hodson, who, uh, which this picture, in fact, is from, his book, Kingdom of the Gods, um, <clears throat> who have done some marvellous work in this area. So that has already started. It's been really going forward for about 100 years uh, and will continue to do so in the next few centuries. Is there anything else? Um, we did get a comment from Dan. He says, as far as science of the Aquarian age as it relates to death, we've seen enormous gains in plasma research. Plasmas as they relate to auras and living biofields. Mm -hmm. Plasmas as viable sources of fusion energy. Finally, plasmas can operate as a basis for past life memory in dying. The nature of our biofields is that if we die in bliss, we will not die at all and consciousness can continue and memories will carry over. Just a positive thought for some folks. There is little, literally no need uh, to fear death. I think this info relates totally to what you're discussing. I will also say that plasma dynamics can in many cases be modeled or related uh, within the longitudinal component of pressure waves, i.e. sound. Okay, okay thanks, that, that'll do for now. Thank you for your comments. I'm not sure how long you wanna go on there for, I think we should move on a bit because um, that comment will relate more to the science and technology page, which I'm gonna to get to soon. Um, because I think it bridges into that, that particular field. So thanks for your comments there. If you can keep the comments relatively succinct, 
for this because I do have a bit more material to get through. Thanks. And was there anything else? No, that was it. And we were almost done with that. So you got the right. gist of it. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I just, I didn't know how long you're going to go on for. <laughs> so uh, the New World Religion, Masonry and Esoteric Groups. And DK discusses this. Most of you know are aware of this, that there will be three main groups of spiritual evolution in the Aquarian Renaissance. Masonry, which covers the first aspect. The New World Religion, which covers the second aspect. And Esoteric Education, which covers the third aspect. Of course, we can associate other rays with these three aspects. The seventh ray, for instance, with masonry. The uh, sixth ray with new world religion, uh, education, the second ray, and the first ray, or all rays even. But basically those three departments, masonry, you have the three paths leading to initiation in the church by whatever name it may be called. And of course, I mentioned before the, uh, the fact that um, the interfaith dialogues that are taking place in the last few decades are the seed of the new world religion. And the third group, the esoteric group, composed of true spiritual esotericists found in all exoteric occult groups. And many of us here are probably in this third group. When the new universal religion and nature of esotericism is understood, there will be a utilization of the banded esoteric organisms. Note that word organism as opposed to organization. The Masonic organism and the church organism as, in, as initiating centers. These three groups converge as their inner sanctuaries are approached. There is no disassociation between the one universal church, the sacred inner lodge of all true Masons, and the innermost circles of the esoteric societies. Three types of men have their need met, three major rays are expressed, and the three paths to the master are trodden, leading all three to the same portal and the same hierophant of initiation. So some interesting uh, uh, comments there. Uh, there have been various Masonic groups in the last century who have been attempting to reform masonry some of them more successfully than others. Uh, some of them are uh, a bit females as well, as, uh, and not traditionally men. And so that is going forward and will continue to do so for the next couple of centuries. Obviously, DK has made some pretty strong statements here about its place as far as these three, uh, three major groups are concerned. Um, the <clears throat> the greatest study, I think, of um, comparative religion, and, and again in education for for younger people, is a must, I guess, for working towards this one universal church that is basically universal spirituality um, that uh, draws upon every tradition, and yet all of those traditions can, can maintain their particular focus if they so choose. Um, down the bottom here, I've got, there's a, an, from another part of DK's work where he talks about the masses that become the intelligentsia, the churches and religions, uh, and the group of esotericists, aspirants and occultists, and the esotericists in their turn uh, linking to planetary hierarchy. So it's a, it's a linking, these are linking um, arrows that I'm talking about here. Uh, the intelligentsia obviously influenced the masses. The esotericists, aspirants and occultists, perhaps they influenced the churches and religions, I'm not sure. But uh, the planetary hierarchy, of course, definitely, interest, definitely influenced the esotericists. So that is related in some way to what I've given above. Any comments or questions before I move on to the next part? No, I don't see any right now. Can't really do this, this justice, of course. So it's just in the time we have, we, can't, we can spend again all day on examining these three different groups, but just to, to at least acknowledge their existence and that that's the kind of big thinking that the master is thinking of. 
with regard to the new cycle. All right, so um, the great station of light on earth. It's quite an amazing statement, this one. The glory that can be seen faintly shining in humanity and the dim light which flickers within the human form must give place to the radiance which is the glory of the developed Son of God. Only a little effort is needed in the demonstration of a steady staying power to enable those who are now on the physical plane of experience to evidence the radiant light and to establish upon the earth a great station of light which will illumine the whole of human thought. Always there have been isolated light bearers down the ages. Now the group light bearer will shortly be seen. Then shall we see the rest of the human family who respond not yet to the Christ impulse, having their progress facilitated towards the path of probation. And I think this is happening now and will increase increasingly accelerate in the next century. If all the aspirants and disciples of the world can submerge their personal interests in the task immediately ahead, we shall have the opening of the great station of light on earth and the founding of a powerhouse, which will greatly hasten the evolution and elevation of humanity and the unfoldment of human consciousness. What he's averring to here are certain groups that I'll read a quote to you about later, who are being bought, I think I might have mentioned it before actually, who are being bought to the one initiator. In other words, to candidates for the third degree initiation. That, if that is successful, it will establish a station of light on this planet that has never existed before and will result in a defeat of the materialistic forces. And this is, this is slated to occur in the next 500 years, the first decanate of Aquarius, ruled by Saturn, which has a, 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 a very close connection with the third initiation, with the throat chakra, the seat of the mental body, and so forth. So, um, and of course, Aquarius itself generically rules the third degree initiation. When we look at the, uh, the fixed cross, the uh, uh, Leo arm re relating to the first degree, the Scorpio arm, the second degree, and the Aquarian arm, the third degree. Now, this brings in the whole science of initiation, the sub, uh, a very glamoured subject too, in terms of where people tend to place themselves quite often. But we have to go through those glamours, I think, to really come to an honest assessment of where we, uh, where we actually are. So it's not an unhealthy process to enter into. And of course, this ties in with the various groups at different levels taking initiation. There's going to be the reversing of the wheel and people taking the first degree, which is happening on mass now, I think, as an extension of what happened in World War One and Two, where many people took the first initiation. Likewise, there are a, a smaller groups that are taking the second degree initiation. Many aspirants and disciples today are, are headed towards the second degree which is a very advanced stage because once you take the second degree, there's not that many lifetimes left to take the third, fourth and fifth. So it, depending on karma and, and the group and the ashram that you're affiliated with, of course, but um, so there is a very large group of uh, people in the so-called new age field at the moment who are somewhere between the first and second degree and who are heading towards the second degree stage. Uh, it's a very glamoured group in many ways. There's a lot of illusion and confusion and um, how to say uh, faulty thinking perhaps, uh, but um, it's a very significant group and, it's a, and it has the second aspect, second ray energy very strongly uh, throughout it. And then, of course, there's this smaller group of third degree initiates who uh, will, in all fields of human endeavor, of course, I'm not talking about esotericists necessarily, um, who are disciples working in the field of politics, arts, science, you name it. Um, and uh, we hear about the fifth root race having reached its acme of development. Uh, that is because 
there are a certain group already who have taken the third degree. I don't know what those numbers would be, maybe just, just a few thousand, but who hold for the whole of the fifth root race that acme of development, of scientific development, development of the mind. And um, just as the masters, for instance, are very few and far between on this planet, there's 63 or so masters that the govern the whole will look after or oversee the whole of human evolution. So likewise, on a lesser scale, uh, these third degree initiates will establish a great station of light upon the planet. <laughs> Before we go on to money and technology, uh, maybe some comments or questions on this, this last um, subject. Uh, yes, Frida asks, do you see this focused in a place like New York? Oh, most, most assuredly. I mean, you know, New York is one of the five major planetary centers. Geneva, Darjeeling, Tokyo, and London. And um, New York, in fact, as, the, as one of the planetary centers, rules the Western Hemisphere, which is technically the Northern and Southern uh, American continents. So, um, Yes, in a, in a word. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the Statue of Liberty is a great symbol of the Station of Light, just like in the picture here on your page. A second ray soul and a third ray personality in New York City. So the third ray has a lot to do with light. Is there another question or comment there? Nope, sorry, that was all I've got. All right. Well, Frida might be more interested in this next subject, the global financial system. So, uh, <laughs> don't be too distracted by the animation there. Um, we have, DK talks about there being adepts who are authorities upon modern financial matters. He talks about them being fourth degree initiates who are these experts in financial matters who are competently preparing, he says, to institute newer techniques of financial interplay. And this will supersede our present methods. They will inaugurate a system of barter and exchange of which modern money is the travestied symbol. They will inculcate this newer method comprehensively, which is comprehensively human, this method of barter and exchange that will supersede big business. Because we must be wondering right now as we're heading into a possible depression, not just a recession, a depression globally as a result of this um, coronavirus and the loss of income, work and so forth. Um, how it's all going to pan out and work out when things go back to normal, quote unquote, because there isn't any normal to go back to. <laughs> uh, and if, if people persist in that, it's, it's probably not going to work. So, um, and already we know that there are different systems of finance being worked out at the moment, like a, like a, a national wage for people, for instance. Um, and this has been experimented in many different cities around the world, uh, cryptocurrencies, digital currencies. Um, and it all depends on how well motivated these systems are as to their success. Uh, many of them, uh, of course, are quite selfishly motivated, in my opinion, and seek to, en seek to enslave people. So, um, this is one of the major things that has to come about, the changing of the financial system. There is a, a hint somewhere in DK's teachings where the, there has to be like a critical mass of money in the hands of the forces of light um, before the hierarchy can return. I'm just going to get rid of that picture because it's distracting. Um, no, it doesn't want to go. <laughs> anyway, not to worry. Um, so national material assets and commodities will be provided for under an entirely new system. 
DK talks about elsewhere in the teachings where there will be global bodies that will handle the resources of all nations and share them with each other. At the moment, we're still in this, this uh, system of competition and of hoarding uh, private ownership of mining companies. For instance, in Australia, it's appalling. Uh, the nation's wealth is in the hand of just a few uh, greedy um, uh, mining magnates who don't seek to share it with the rest of the nation. And this happens in many countries. Uh, so this has, got to, this has got to stop, obviously. And the fairer redistribution of resources to take place accordingly. Taurus has a lot to do with this because we, uh, it's a sign of money, it's a sign of gold, and of course, Uranus, the great revolutionary, is coming through Taurus at the moment, as I've described in my recent newsletters, and changing the game. Sorry, just a moment. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that was a gif, that picture. Um, the golden eye of Taurus points the way to those who likewise see that which is gold will someday too respond passing from east to west in that dire time when the urge to gather gold uh, shall rule the lower half, that is the personality of men and nations. The search for gold, the search for golden light divine directs the bull of life. Of course, the bull of life is the mother of illumination, Taurus, uh, the bull of form. These two must meet and meeting clash, thus vanishes the gold. And it's appropriate we're talking about this on the eve of the WESAC full moon 2020, um, just, in, just in over 12 hours time. Um, because this is probably going to be one of the most important WESAC festivals ever, I'd imagine, given the state of the world crisis at the moment. Uranus is the esoteric ruler of Libra, and Libra is the main sign of money. And the quote here says, Uranus, the seventh ray, works through this planet and is the embodiment of the principle of concretion and the materializing of that which is in need of objective manifestation through the bringing together of spirit and matter. It is here that the whole mystery of money lies hid and the creation and production of money it is through the relation of the three aspects of the third divine manifestation, law, affinity, and concretized energy that money is created. Uh, and of course, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, the esoteric ruler of Libra, the exoteric ruler of Aquarius. So the fact that it's coming through Taurus at the moment, squaring uh, Saturn in Aquarius, which I discussed in my latest newsletter, will go on till the end of 2022, and Saturn is, of course, related to money too. So I'm sure there might be plenty of questions and comments about this particular subject. Um, do we have any? Uh, no, we don't, but I just wanted to let you know that you've got about 17 minutes left. Yeah. Just give you an update. Thank but you. no questions at this moment. All right. So, um, so many things to change. Actually, Who the thought. <laughs> question. Yeah. Um, when you're talking the of Uranus and Libra and the seventh ray working through the bringing together of spirit and matter, does that have to do with that uh, one of the triangles introduced and in, uh, rays and in initiation? It is, uh, I think, Gemini and Libra on the top with the eye, the eye or the um, solar logos at the at the apex on the bottom? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm oh, okay. Probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> probably. Okay. Yeah, that's right. what I thought of when you were saying. Okay, thanks. Okay. Nothing else then? No. Um, let me just go back here. Uh, so, I mean, barter and exchange is a very ancient system. Um, I do recall also the Tibetan talking about how art will be transacted in the future. Great works of art or people creating their own works of art as a system, as part of this system of barter and exchange. We have had various systems 
um, experimented with in the last few decades in Australia. There was two or three systems going there, but I'm not sure how successful they were or whether they're still going or not. Um, when you get into looking at the system of barter and exchange, it really gets down to brass tacks as far as primordial survival instincts go. So, um, all right, so we'll go on to the next page, science and technology, which is in fact the last page. So um, I didn't have time to finish this as much as I'd like to. Um, it covers a lot. We've been in this amazing industrial technological revolution since the 18th century. If someone needs to mute their sound there, please. Um, and this is due to the influence of the, of the fifth ray. There was a short cycle of the fifth ray that came into to incarnation in 1775 and was withdrawn by order of the Manu, apparently, <laughs> uh, uh, prematurely because of the negative impact that it was having, probably on the, uh, the emphasis of too much mind and also of the byproducts of the Industrial Revolution, uh, which were pollution, and also greed and monopolies and control of large um, factories and corporations and so forth. So the fifth ray, of course, is the only ray to come through Aquarius. Um, it will be active in various other cycles throughout the age of Aquarius, but just by virtue of the fact that Aquarius, the Aquarian procession cycle is unfolding, the fifth ray will be present. So what we've seen in terms of the marvelous accelerated rate of inventions and innovations and scientific uh, advances in medicine and in many other areas since uh, what the 1800s uh, and particularly just in the last 30 years the the spiral of evolution is becoming faster and tighter and uh, there's almost something every week or every day that you hear about there are many new healing modalities also coming into existence and in the Aquarian age, the healing through sound, uh, colors, colored lights, and frequencies. Uh, this is already happening. There are many different things that, um, that you can employ now for, uh, for healing you know, with, with frequencies and uh, electronic uh, attachments to the body and so forth. So this interfaces with what the person was saying before about plasma, about magnetism, electricity, and there are, the Tibetan talks about the, 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 the various forms of electricity and of which we've, we're really only using the most gross form of electricity at this point in our evolution. It talks about how so, there will be silent transport in the future. And this is already occurring, I think, in places like China and Japan where they run these um, railways on uh, basically on magnetic fields. And then of course, this nuclear fusion as opposed to nuclear fission. Um, and DK does make some statements in race initiations and externalization of the hierarchy, I think about how important the discovery of, um, of the, uh, of fission was how it was a great spiritual event in uh, contradistinction to most people's view of of the destruction of many forms um, because he was basically hinting that it's getting very close to nuclear fusion and when nuclear fusion comes about or in other forms of of, uh, of technology such as the the nikola tesla um, uh, power plants then humanity will be liberated in, in many ways to, to really develop consciousness and not be, not be slaves. But of course, uh, Tesla had a lot of his technology shut down by other materialistic forces who wanted to extract their, their pound of flesh from humanity and still do. 
Um, he was way ahead of his time, of course, but uh, in the Aquarian age, there'll be many um, people coming back of the caliber of Tesla and, and bringing the technologies in. So um, it's a very big subject, this one. Uh, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, the planet of exoteric and esoteric science. The fifth ray is the only ray to pour through Aquarius. The combination will be will bring amazing new developments in technology of which the past 50 years is only the beginning. At present, the physical effects of fission of the atom and subsequent constructive use is the immediate problem before modern science. The fission of the nucleus of the atom is the outer demonstration that humanity has encompassed the divine mind and can now move on to encompass the love or the attractive nature of divinity. Now, these frequencies also bring up the whole um, theme of 5G and the extraordinary phenomenon of, of, um, of resistance to this new technology, which is being brought in with pretty much at any, at any research or discussion and foisted upon uh, humanity. And uh, there are many people who make valid points about this, others to say, that uh, from the esoteric point of view, that there is an increasing frequency of the human vibration that should be able to handle that, or that maybe it, it will even uh, catalyze or accelerate human frequencies. Um, and there's a similar argument with, uh, with nuclear radiation as well. So uh, these are interesting subjects to, to reflect upon. And um, the, of course, the extreme views at the moment are that it's not COVID-19, it's actually 5G. <laughs> so um, there's truth in all these things. And um, yet at the moment, we are living in a world that is so divided on so many fronts in the esoteric community, in the political field, uh, and the new group of world servers really needs to take a stand to help bring about a fusion and a unification, obviously, um, to, to create some stability in, uh, with a world that's, uh, that's being affected strongly by the fear vibration or the fear virus, if you like. So any questions there, Bill? Uh, yes, Dan says, can you say again where DK spoke about fusion or fission? Um, in raised initiations or externalization of the hierarchy or both, um, I'm not sure whether you have the CD to do the searches through, but if you do do a search, search for fission and atom or atomic, you'll get a lot of esoteric references to atomic, however, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, they're the main places, uh. Uh, I think most of the comments might be in raised initiation, but don't quote me on that. You'd have to have a look yourself. Um, I just found one reference in um, uh, TEV, page 130 and 131. But I'm Telepathy not in the sure. Vehicle. Right. Um, it talks about the divine mind um, and the, the fission of the nucleus of the atom in the past few years is the outer sign or demonstration yeah. that humanity has encompassed the divine mind and can now yeah. move on to encompass the love of the attractive nature of divinity. Yeah. That's the last uh, point I make at the bottom of this page here. Oh yeah, um, sorry. That's all right, it's good. It's not, it doesn't hurt to, to uh, emphasize that. Um, and there's much to ponder in that, that question. Uh, and he does acknowledge, I think, just after that sentence, that there is much to ponder in that or that he's dropping a hint or something like that. Right. And another question there? Um, we have several. Uh, Barb says, uh, the Federal Reserve, a private entity with no real oversight, is one of the current causes of the rigged economy. Yes, indeed. Uh, well explained in a documentary, and she put a link there for everyone who wants to look okay. at that. Thank you. Next one. Um, that's all I see, really. 
Well, um, we've got a whole five minutes to spare. All right. Um, I, there are other things I can comment on. Um, for instance, at the moment, well, maybe, maybe I should talk about more general things. Let me just backtrack through here for a moment. Yeah, just the, the timeline, I think I wanted to discuss more because for quite a few of the last 10 years, we'd all been thinking 2025 uh, as if the masters were gonna reappear straight after their once in a century conclave. But it gradually occurred to me that having read many of the Bailey books several times, that the intricate organization of all the personnel of all the ashrams and the disincarnation and reincarnation process that would be required uh, would take several decades to to affect to bring about and hence my my uh, speculated date of 2080 2100 back here somewhere yeah which also fitted well with the airy trigon starting in Aquarius as being a symbol of the Christ returning. The one who holds the office of the Christ at the moment um, apparently is making an unusual uh, reappearance in this age. Uh, apparently it's, it's not it's, it's rotated more regularly, if you like, but this same being has unfinished business from 2000 years ago to follow through upon and will be the avatar for the Aquarian cycle. So whether uh, there's the, the whole question of coming back into a body for, as, is, as for all the masters, but they do, uh, I did really saw an interesting passage the other day about passports because of the, what's been going on lately with the inability for people to travel and borders being blocked. I'm waiting for a few borders to open here in Portugal so I can go to, to Germany in a few weeks time for a quick trip. Um, and DK talks about the fact that just after World War II, many borders were blocked and that yeah, that passports and visas were a symbol of the spirit of separation, uh, which is occurring now in many ways in terms of social distancing, in terms of not being able to travel, in terms of a clampdown basically um, that's been uh, ordered upon humanity. So um, uh, a lot of this is a symbol of Saturn uh, this you know, lockdown is a, is a Saturnian keyword in many ways. Um, but anyway, I, I felt it more appropriate that just as in the Jupiter Saturn Pisces in the chart of Jesus 7 BC, that the Christ return or reincarnation, um, which is a very complex thing in itself, it's not what you normally would think of about reincarnation, uh, will at least symbolically, um, employ the energies of Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius. So I think we could pretty much, if there's no other questions or comments. Um, um, you do, there, there are a couple of questions. First, okay. um, Go ahead. Uh, Catherine asks, who is the man in the image there? Oh, that's Leonardo da Vinci in his younger days. And then, no. um, and that's one of his drawings underneath uh, the dragon and the lion uh, fighting with each other. It's an amazing picture. And then Regina asks, can you please put up the Diva Kingdom slide again? Okay. This one here is the, is this, this is the uh, Lord of the Ferns, I think is the name for this. Um, so this is a higher, more individualized diva that presides over an area or expanse of forest that, uh, that is composed of many lesser divas that build the lesser forms. Yeah. 
And um, was there anything associated with that that she wanted to ask? Uh, she doesn't. Of course, the um, no, no, healing, she says no. The healing that we talk about that we've touched upon today in the um, in the this, that will take place in cooperation with the divas in the future is something that Hodgson covers in several of his books. Uh, in fact, in that same book that this um, picture is in, there are artists, just, uh, he's described to an artist, uh, healing divas that he's seen and, and the energies that they radiate. So this is all coming down a lot to the thinning of the veil between um, the astral and the uh, etheric planes and the energy of the seventh ray, the color of violet. And um, the veil is becoming very thin and this will allow the etheric vision to take place that Francis was referring to before in the not too distant future, in, in fact. So we are in for an extraordinary revolution, as I said before, probably the most amazing renaissance in human history. And ever more so because of the fact that we are in a rare double Aquarius cycle. We're in a cycle of 2,160 years for Aquarius that is coinciding with the 25,000 years cycle of Aquarius and the greater Zodiac, which has only occurred for the seventh time in the history of the fifth root race. So the Aquarian energy is going to be around right through to the beginning of the sixth root race, um, that 25,000 year period. And this is just going to be, this next 2000 odd year cycle is just going to be a microcosm of that greater cycle that's going to be with us for a long time. Okay, I don't see anything else, and, and now we're out of time. Very good. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. It's great to see all the familiar faces and friends, uh, and uh, I'm just loving the way that this conference is going so far. It's really quite unique, quite different in many ways, and it's a great reflection, I think, of, um, of how we've all been working with each other for the last couple of decades and, and how, how smoothly everything is running. So... Uh, I really want to thank all the organizers and people working behind the scenes to help make this happen. It's a, it's a true example, in fact, of Aquarian group cooperation. Thanks. <laughs>